My name is Todd Parks. This channel is Parks and Education where we talk tech for teachers and today we're talking read and write. So I'm coming at this with the perspective of I'm a teacher, I don't have a lot of time. No time! There's never any time! Time is precious and valuable. So how am I going to take the time to play around with a new extension when I have a ton of other things that I need to be doing. This video hopefully alleviates some of that stress and it will tell you whether you want to use it in your classroom or not. Read and Write is a literacy software extension for Google and I wanna get the web extension for Google Chrome. So I'm going to go to the web store and I'm going to type in read and write or read write hit enter and it should pop up and you're going to notice that it's already added for me so the icon looks like this in your extensions bar obviously it's going to say add to Chrome for you for me it's going to say remove from Chrome because I already have it go ahead and add it and once you do that what I'm going to do is go to a Google search and I'm just going to search for an article on the first iPhone. I'm looking for some text to show you guys what this app can actually do. So like most articles that you find online, there's going to be a lot of noise. And the first thing that I found when I pull up an article, the story of the original iPhone here, you guys can see that there's advertisements on the side, that there's advertisements embedded within, that there are YouTube videos and pictures, uh, that there are all kinds of banner ads for you to click on. I want to get rid of all of that noise if I'm a student and if I'm a teacher, and I want to focus on just the text. That really is the beauty that I found first in Read and Write. If you click the icon, this is the toolbar that will show up this little XY axis that's here if you click and hold down your left click you can drag it wherever you want wherever you feel comfortable but I'm gonna start almost all the way to the right and it says simplify the page when I click this it's going to take the article and simplify it down get rid of all the advertisements and give me just the headings and the text so it takes the entire article and simplifies it for me. Now, what can the app do? We have a play, a pause, and a stop button, but hitting those buttons just by themselves isn't going to do anything. The icon here that says hover speech, if you click it, you'll see a purple line or a colored line go underneath it. If you hover over a part of a sentence, it will read that sentence or that heading. The story of the original iPhone that nobody thought was possible. So I'm hovering over that title and it reads the entire thing. Now, what if I don't like the voice? What if I don't like the speed at which the extension is reading back to me? I can change all of that. I'm going to unclick the hover button and I'm going to come over here to these three dots. I'm gonna click on options. And then the first thing you'll see is speech. I can change my voice to a person from, well, I was, Serena from the UK and I can switch it to Tom from the US and I'm gonna slow him down I'm gonna go about 50% and another button that you can click is continuous reading so if you wanted the extension to continue reading you just click this piece here and it will continue reading let's click it and see if it will work for us back to the hover speech when the iPhone shipped to customers on June 29th 2007, the first generation of the device that would change the world was missing a lot of what is as today, but it set up the roadmap for Apple that continues to this day. The first generation iPhone was, in many days, quite... So you can see that it went on to the next sentence. When we use that hover button and put it over that first sentence, it keeps going, and that was the option that we went ahead and put continuous reading. I'm going to unclick that just to show you some more features of what Read and Write can do. I'm going to just highlight this like I normally would any other document. But despite all of its shortcomings, 
relative to today, that first iPhone was hugely important. It was Apple's entry. You can see that it will read exactly what I highlight. So let's see if I can just highlight a couple of words. Into a new category. Let's stop that. Which would soon become. And it just goes and reads the words that I've highlighted. That's a pretty cool feature. Again, you've got to stop or you get to click off of these buttons if you want to use something else. So the next three tools in our bar that I'm going to talk about is dictionary, picture dictionary, and then we also have web search here. And what's interesting is if you find a word and you left click and drag your mouse over the word, what you're going to be able to do is click dictionary. And it's got its own built-in dictionary. So it will come up with all the different definitions that generation means. Keeping that open, if I click picture dictionary, my word is still highlighted and it gives the picture that goes along with this word, if there is one. And if I want to, I can hit web search and it will open up a new tab. Anything that goes along with a Google search of the word generation, it'll pop up. So now, how do I keep those words all together? And that's where these tools come in. These are the highlight tools. You've got a yellow, green, blue, and kind of a purplish color. The colors don't matter. Click and highlight a word like the word generation, and then click the color that you want, and it will highlight it. I'm gonna get a couple more, and I'm gonna highlight them in different colors just so that you can see it. Okay, I've got three words all different colors. Now, if I went to click on the dictionary, no valid word is selected because I haven't physically highlighted a word like we did before with our mouse. Same thing with picture dictionary or our web search, okay? Nothing's going to come up. But if I wanna take these three words and I wanna make a list of them, I come over here to vocabulary, click it, and it is making a Google Doc of the definitions, and if there's a picture that goes along with it, it's gonna give me that symbol or that picture. For the most part, it's gonna be pretty spot on. But you have a vocabulary list that a kid can generate or that you can generate for your students automatically. You don't have to create anything, it will create it for you. So if you wanted to share this document through Google Classroom, or with students, that's possible. If you wanted to print it, that's possible as well. All right, going back to our article, how do I clean this up if I don't want anything highlighted? I'm just gonna kind of take my mouse and scroll over all of them, all of the highlights, and hit this broom icon where it says clear highlights, and they will be gone. Now, what is this button? It says collect highlights. All it's doing is taking our highlights that we had, I'll grab two of them, and it's going to put it into a document that I don't think is as nice as the vocabulary document. It's just grabbing them and making a list of them. So if you wanted to have just a list, obviously, for students then to go ahead and define or to talk about or um, to create their own images for this is one way to do it. Okay, so I did realize after the fact that it will color code and organize your vocabulary words by color. So it might be a nice organizational tool. What's the next thing that I can show? One of the reading features that I like is the screen mask. This goes along with state tests and computer-based testing. Um, you're gonna be able to really mess around with any of the settings that go along with this. So this little icon can be moved again by the X, Y axis that's there. And then the settings for it are here and you can adjust them while in and see what it looks like. So the first one, the background, you can make it really dark. You can make it really light, whatever you choose. The reading light, Obviously, I want to be able to see what I'm reading. And then the height of what is able to be seen. You're able to adjust that really narrow to nothing all the way up to, well, it looks like 400 is the, the max. 
And so once you hit OK, it puts it into place. And again, you can change that to any height that you want. So as you read, it's going to scroll down. And as you move your mouse, it will scroll with what you're reading. So to click off of that, I'm just going to go up to the toolbar, click it, and it is now gone. Next piece that goes along with the extension reading to you is this screenshot reader icon here. I'm going to click on my screenshot reader. So any piece of text and it gives us this plus sign that we just go ahead and put a box around. Which would soon become standard in the category. And we could replay it if we wanted to or just X out of it. And that will shut the piece of this extension off. The next icon I'm going to talk about is Audio Maker. This, whatever you highlight, if I highlight the first paragraph and hit Audio Maker, it's going to turn it into an MP3 of our voice reading this paragraph. So when I go ahead and click open, it's downloading to my computer and hit open. When the iPhone is shipped to customers on June 29th, 2007 you see that I now have an mp3 version of this and I can distribute it however I want at that point let's get into some of the features that go along with a Google Doc and when you're writing something in a Google Doc so I'm going to open up a new Google Doc and inside of this, our bar pops up. If it doesn't, for whatever reason, just click read and write, the read and write icon in your extensions toolbar. And let's try to see how well this responds to our voice. Hello, this is a tutorial on read and write, comma, the web extension for Google Chrome, period. Hey, this seems to work better than Siri, exclamation point. So I turned it off just by clicking on that microphone over there. And you can see that this really works very well. It got everything correct. It even uh, capitalized the H of hey when I started a new sentence. So this worked out pretty well. The other piece that we could use um, when going ahead and typing is the prediction icon. If we turn this on and we want to start a sentence, it'll give us a list of 10 different words that we could use to possibly start our sentence. And if we hover over them, B, two, it'll read them for us. And as we type, And you can see the words popping up right a what the app is trying to do is it's trying to predict what it is I'm going to say next you see this on a lot of smartphones that you can turn it on turn it off so they put this prediction piece in there as well to turn it off we just click it again and we're done so one of the last features that I haven't touched on is the read out loud feature and if you click this it will open a new window with our simplified version of our story and if we want to click the record button and we just hit stop when we're done um, we can record and re-record as much as we want and then be able to share it with the teacher so i'm just going to start uh, with the first sentence when the iphone shipped to customers on june 29th 2007 i'm going to stop it i'm going to hit play when the iPhone shipped to customers on June 29th, 2007, you can see that that comes out really clear. And if I wanted to send it to a teacher, it would go ahead and send it right to my teacher that I'm working with and that assigned this. And if you want to choose a different teacher, it'll allow you to do that as well. Okay. As a whole, this is Read and Write.